Hi guys, my name is Baron Jepson. Um, the purpose of this tutorial is to show the principles from a really good tutorial for Blender and how they can be applied in Cinema 4D. The original tutorial was by a guy called Andrew Price who runs Blender Guru. He's an excellent uh, tutor. I won't be going over the uh, simple modelling tasks that we have to uh, do for this uh, tutorial. What I would ask you to do if you do need help with things like that is probably go and watch Andrew's tutorial. The modelling in Blender is slightly different but still the principles are the same. So I'll get on with the uh, tutorial now and just show you what it is that you need to model. It's uh, just one tenth of this entire structure. So set that live. And that's all it is that you have to model. Now, if I draw that in close enough, you probably, if uh, you're at that level, will be able to model that from what you can see in front of you now without me having to go through every movement. And if we go into perspective, you can see what I've done is created the top profile and then extruded from that top profile and extruded down. These points along the bottom, I used the set point value, which allowed me to uh, have them all at the same level all the way around wherever I needed them which I felt gave me enough depth to give some realism so all we have to do from here is go back into our top view now what we need to do at this point is add a mirror or in Cinema 4D's case it's adding a symmetry object we're going to point mode. All you need to do is ensure that these points have been zeroed out to the world axis. Drop that spoke into the symmetry object. Inside the symmetry object, ensure a well point is on and you've got a decent tolerance. Then we need to create the rest of the spokes. So we drop that into an array object and that's the wheel complete. Now it looks as though it's done that all automatic but it won't do. What will happen is when you first apply the array object and drop the symmetry object in this is what you will have. The default settings are a radius of 250 and seven copies. Now obviously there we have eight spokes basically your original plus the seven copies. What you need to do is drop the copies down to four so now you have the five spokes reduce your radius to zero and that produces your wheel. Now at this point the wheel cannot be applied to, cannot be uh, put into an hypernodes object. I can show you why. We'll just render that up. And as you can see because the geometry is not really attached we are getting it rounding at the corners. Now if you wanted to and the wheel was going to be at a fair distance you could probably just add weight into them points and stick to the array um, creating instance objects if you liked and that would cut down on some of your resources being used but I would rather go and create a full mesh so we'll take that back out of that hypernodes. We'll run, sorry, just 
get rid of that new array object. We'll select the spoke, symmetry and array. We will run current state to object. We will then hide those items. Now clicking on command and open up the hierarchy and run connect and delete. Now still we have the same problem at this point. We're still unable to drop it into the hyperherbs until we've run optimize. So we will command shift A which uh, deselects those points. Go into functions, optimize and ensuring you have enough tolerance click OK. Now once we've done that step we should be able to drop into our hyperherbs object and if we do a quick render you'll see that that rim is almost completely done. There are some uh, modeling issues that I want to go over and some geometry that I don't particularly like so I'll go over that now. In Cinema 4D we have the option that we can snap alignment to a spline so what I'll need you to do is create a circle spline, scale it up to the outside the profile zoom in scale it down just slightly so it's as close as you can and as you can see we have a gap running around the outside but we don't have a gap at the top now that is simply because we've now applied the hyperherbs so the mesh is being drawn in uh, at weak points so what I will do is enable snapping by pressing P put on 2.5D snapping and then enable spline snapping there we go our rim we'll just uh, rename that it is whole rim connected. Right. So right click, go to magnet tool, reduce the radius to zero, so you don't need to be dragging any other other points, and just go around the outside of the rim. Previous to this, I have um, <clears throat> excuse me. I've attempted to do this uh, by eye and uh, through simple modeling techniques, which do not work. But this is a lovely technique, and the snapping works absolutely perfectly. Oh, he says, and overshoots. So just take a couple of minutes while I go around. Lovely. So now your outside circumference is a full circle and regardless of how close or how far away some of these uh, lines are or edges, edge loops are, and if you had any issues, uh, say you, your holes here weren't uh, particularly neat, then you could go ahead and go through all of this and ensure that they're all circular and that you're happy. I'm not going to do that now. So the other issues with this geometry that I'm going to show you are this particular line, let's go into edge mode, this particular line here. is creating an artifact. Let's just render it out. Can you see there's a slight tug in that geometry. 
and you can see there's slight tugging at the bottom of that hole. It's not major and you could probably get away with it from a distance. Maybe. Yeah, it's still there. I don't particularly like it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select that loop. So I'm going to go UL, select, select. Right click, and I'm going to dissolve. So let's have a look at that again. And command R. And as you can see, the tugging has gone. Um, the holes here, uh, the other thing is perhaps in the bottom there we need to resize the bottom of the hole so it looks neater, I would say. But the other thing that I'm going to tackle right now is these triangles. Now, I don't like these just due to the way they tug at the geometry. So. Let's have a look. It's not particularly showing, maybe I'm being a little bit uh, pedantic, but uh, I prefer not to have them. So, going to MK, make sure you're on line mode, make sure you turn off snapping, show the points because that's what we're going to be working from and to. So, one line across there, across there, there, and that's all we needed to do there. So now we have some edges that we need to get rid of. So let's select those edges into edge mode. If you're finding it hard to select your edges, maybe reduce the radius of your live selection tool. Oh. Right, once you've got them all selected, right click and click dissolve. And we'll just render that out. I'm much happier with that now. I think the flow of the geometry is far smoother and uh, we're almost at the end. Let's just zoom out. Oh, one more thing before I do give up. I'll just go into perspective mode. No one, I'll go back into top and we will select these areas here, so U, L, select, holding down shift. Functional, make sure you don't have uh, select boundary loop and things like that switched on. Now, We'll go into perspective mode. We'll go into our move tool. Soft selection, enable. Now, I'll go through some of the issues with this. Uh, they're not really issues, they're just different uh, settings. Now, we're set to a radius of 102. We'll leave it at that for now. It's not a major deal, so. Uh, Let's go ahead and see if we can put a slight curvature on these spokes that represent what you can see in the image that we've been working from. Now that appears to be working fine but as we start to draw you'll see a peak start to appear which it's definitely not right. If we rendered that you'd see that it's definitely not smooth enough, it's not, it's not placed enough uh, pressure um, or rather fall off along that edge to incorporate the other parts of the mesh. So we'll just command Z and we'll try another setting. We could try Dome and uh, 
and that seems to be working better. It's uh, affecting closer to the rim. The uh, it's not creating much of a peak, though. If we pull too far, it's obviously uh, creating some distortion. So let's, let's quickly render that out, and that looks quite nice. The only problem I would have is that it may be affecting this rim a little too much so we may have to adjust the radius so let's command Z that try another one can you circle no I'm at a bit of a loss because usually it will show you the uh... ah there we go I haven't got it turned on it shows you the preview and it shows you in yellow the fall off that is being applied to the points that you are going to adjust. So if we go back to our linear, you can see it lightened off quite a lot there. So all your force is being applied very close to this area. And uh, if we go back to circle, you can see it darkens up quite a lot. So the fall off is uh, greater over a longer distance so I particularly like that but I'm not happy that it's encroaching in this area here slightly so we'll drop down our radius you can see it's still there but hopefully it's not touching this area and we'll do a quick render and I think that's it I'm happy with that and uh, that's it for today's tutorial thank you very much for listening I've enjoyed it